It was a calm day. 88-year-old Yik Oi Huang went on her usual morning walk, never imagining the horror that awaited. She didn't return home that morning. We got a phone call saying she's missing. We get to her place. We walk around the park, and my dad found her in the sand pit. Susana Yi Huang's granddaughter remembers seeing her grandmother unconscious and left for dead at a local playground in Visitation Valley, San Francisco. Bludgeoned, broken bones, you know, just unsightly. She couldn't see. She couldn't breathe. They. Put a tube through her nose. Yi's grandmother tried to recover from a broken spine and shattered face. An overwhelming time for Yi. Can't we just all come together? Damn it! <sighs> Yi took this video the day of the attack. Her grandmother stayed in the hospital for a year and passed away in 2020. Felt angry that this happened to her. That some person would do this to an 88-year-old. In 16 of America's largest cities, anti-Asian hate crimes increased nearly 150 percent in 2020, according to the Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism at California State University, San Bernardino. Since the pandemic started, attacks against Asians went up in Los Angeles 114 percent, in New York 833 percent. Become better educated. John Yang, who leads Asian Americans Advancing Justice, says times are changing for the worse. I grew up in the Midwest, and it was at a time that there were very few Asian Americans. So certainly, I was called my fair share of names. I, I hate to admit it, that but I've actually gotten into a couple of fights because of it. What we are facing today is an even more vitriolic response, an even more hateful response than what some of us experienced in, in the past. San Francisco. In February, a defenseless Thai grandfather is slammed into the ground. He dies two days later. In Oakland, a 91-year-old man senselessly shoved into concrete. These unprovoked attacks, followed by thousands of others, according to the group Stop API Hate. Then came the shooting in Atlanta that killed eight people, six of them Asian women, and the issue exploded onto the national consciousness. Still heartbroken. This anti-Asian hate is at its peak. Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus Chair Representative Judy Chu points to former President Donald Trump's rhetoric amid the pandemic. Kung flu, the horrible China virus. Chu says it's that, and four years of the former president's dismissive language against immigrants that fueled the hate. <laughs> But with many of the recent heinous moments caught on camera, some people are also concerned about Black Asian conflict. The concept has received public attention throughout history, like during the 1992 Los Angeles riots, which started after a jury, which included one Asian, chose not to convict four police officers seen on tape beating a black man, Rodney King. That same month, a Korean store owner shot and killed a 15-year-old black girl accused of stealing a bottle of orange juice. The owner received probation and a $500 fine. Several Korean-owned businesses were severely damaged in the wake of that case. But Yang says these observations only pit races against each other. We are dealing with communities that are in fear, economic fear, healthcare fear. That they're put in situations they're almost competing against each other. He says economic scarcity and labels like model minorities have created racial wedges between communities in America and have distracted from the true problem of systemic racism. Some of the AAPI community. Members are tying these attacks to white supremacy, saying that the concept and that、uh, white supremacists have been fueling, have been enabling racial prejudice. What do you make of all of that? I believe that at the core of this is indeed white supremacy. It is something that our country has not dealt effectively with、uh, in in decades. And also, let me say that domestic terrorism has clearly not been dealt effectively with. In fact, after 9/11, all the investigations were directed towards Muslims, South Asians, and Sikh Americans. And the concept of going after domestic terrorism 
wasn't even there. Chu says real momentum didn't come until the Atlanta shooting, saying it shouldn't have to take a massacre for national awareness. Stop AAPI hate tallies 3,800 incidents reported from March of last year to February of this year, where women are attacked over twice as often as men. And yet these numbers are likely vastly underreported. <laughs> this Chinese elder meets with police at a gathering in Washington, D.C. She tells officers how she doesn't feel safe walking alone, yet she never feels like she can call police because of historic distrust and language barriers. She says she has worries about being attacked at any time, but has hope due to the district's Asian liaison unit. They're able to communicate in Korean, Vietnamese, Chinese and Thai, but some critics say the answer isn't more policing, but rather more resources on socioeconomic issues like affordable housing. There is no perfect solution to eradicating racism, but there's new momentum. President Biden is working on several initiatives, including getting more funding to AAPI survivors of assault, and lawmakers are vowing to prioritize a bill that would establish more resources to respond to hate crimes. I'm the proud granddaughter of Dick Boy Huang. For Yi, she wants to see more community patrols, more security cameras, and personal safety devices, all tactics that she says could have helped her grandmother avoid prolonged torture. Sometimes I feel like it was a nightmare. It didn't happen. However, I'm shaken out of that nightmare quite quickly because it's still happening. So with all the cases that are happening now, reminds me that, oh, yes, yes, my grandmother, it happened. Yi's grandmother's case is still going through trial and has not been labeled as a hate crime by law enforcement. But Yi says whatever the motive, oftentimes older Asian Americans are targeted because they're seen as more vulnerable and weak, especially when they don't speak the same language. Towards the last two weeks of, of the end of her life, we invited a, cl a clown to mime and dance and play guitar. Uh, he had a ukulele, actually, and uh, um, serenaded my grandmother and made her laugh. Now Yi fights to be a voice against hate in her community. Beyond stopping hate, what we really want is inclusivity, is acceptance, visibility. She hopes decency and love will serve as protection against all forms of hate. Now, Yik Oi, Yi's grandmother's first name, actually translates to abundant love. And now Yi tells me she's trying to get the park where her grandmother was found renamed after her name to promote unity and love. And Yi also tells me, Mel, uh, that she had created the hashtag Asians Belong and encourages everyone to use it. That's Em Win for us from Capitol Hill. Em, thank you very much for that powerful reporting this morning.